Hi, my name's Clive Waring Flood, and the, uh, I'm the editor of uh, Silvershots magazine. Welcome to our very first video in depth interview of a photographer, and uh, we have selected for our first interview Michael Cook, uh, who is becoming very quickly one of Australia's leading indigenous art photographers. And we are here at the Andrew Baker Gallery in Brisbane, Australia, to talk to Michael. Start in 2008, where I won a, an Indigenous award, um, and uh, it sort of persuaded me to go in and, and create a, a couple of projects I'd been thinking about for quite some time. Um, main reason being that I, what the art industry does is give me full control over what I want to do from beginning to end. So um, working in the art industry has given me that control to uh, be able to create the projects that I want to do, uh, which was the main reason I, I went into it. Um, I started on a, on a project in, in 2009 after uh, winning the award and uh, brought it into the gallery in Brisbane here and um, Andrew really liked it and decided to show it in 2010. It sounds to me as though that while you were doing your, your wedding in fashion photography that somewhere there you had the seed of an idea for this particular series, is that right? Uh, I, I suppose what the weddings led me into was um, I wanted to get some published work uh, and it led me into doing a couple of personal projects for myself, which included a lot of um, styling and makeup and hair and using professional models and so on. Um, so it taught me a process to go through to be able to create um, a project that I had full control over. Um, these uh, two projects that I worked on got published um, in overseas magazines, um, but that was sort of a, a key element to, to basically teaching myself how I wanted to put the art projects together. Where on earth did you get the idea from to actually obtain images from the 27 Australian Prime Ministers since Federation in 1901 and superimpose images of Aborigines over the top of them? Where did you get this idea from? Uh, it probably initially come from the title. I, I, some of my projects I think of the title first, so I thought it was through my eyes. Uh, and I ask a question, what if, what if, um, our government, uh, the early settlers, could have seen uh, from an Aboriginal perspective. Uh, so it's an, an idea I come up with. Uh, I suppose my ideas come, my mother, like when I was being brought up as a, as a child, my mother used to fight for Indigenous rights. Um, so I, I've listened to her stories over the years and, and uh, a, a lot of the basis from my ideas come from uh, what she has been teaching me, I suppose, or, or some of the issues I've seen her deal with over the years, uh, being brought up as a, as a child. Where about um, did you get the models from? To, did you have them specifically posed for each individual Prime Minister? Uh, I, I did. I actually went out and, and found the models um, for, e for each of the Prime Minister's faces. Uh, so I went to three different locations uh, between Brisbane and Sherberg, which is the, the Aboriginal community um, close to where I live, and up in Harvey Bay, which was my original hometown. Uh, so I photographed around about 25 people for the project, but I ended up using only about 19. How difficult was it to actually get the copyright release and images for these, these um, archived photographs of Australian Prime Ministers? Uh, I, I contacted the National Library of Australia uh, after being on their website and researching the images that I wanted to buy. Uh, they actually have an archive that you can buy images from. I did have to explain the project uh, and what I was wanting to do. Um, there, is, there is a lot of respect in Australia for Aboriginal history though. Um, when it comes to the art projects, uh, they were quite positive about um, giving me the images or selling me the images to, to be able to use for this project. This one that you're holding in your hand there at the moment is? Uh, that's called Keating. Uh, so what I've done is I've put uh, the name and the year that they were in power on the bottom. Um, I, this one actually isn't instantly recognisable as Paul Keating in terms of the, the 
the features. No, exactly. But uh, the next one you've got here, Mr. John Howard, is 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 certainly recognisable to a certain extent. And I suppose out of out of the ones you've shown us so far, the one of Bob Hawke, um, who's one of the, the certainly Australia's most flamboyant prime ministers, it's quite unsettling actually to um, to, to look at these images. Um, did you have quite a lot of indigenous photographs that you already had that you could superimpose on their faces? Uh, no, I didn't have any actually. I, uh, it's something that I went and photographed after I um, received the images from the uh, National Library. Uh, I actually started with Bob Hawke. Um, he was the first one I did and the uh, effort that, uh, there was very minimal effort to actually get this overlay to sit over the photograph. And I thought, oh, well, originally I was only, only going to do about six or eight images. Uh, and I thought, oh, this is quite easy. So I then attempted to go ahead and do full, the full 27 Prime Ministers. Um, and what I found was, depending on the actual um, original features of that Prime Minister, led to how difficult the images were to retouch. Um, someone like Bob Hawke only took about four minutes because he, his features actually uh, are a little bit closer to Indigenous features. But someone like uh, Paul Keating, uh, whose features are, are quite heavily European. He's very angular, isn't he? In terms he of he has a very, nose and, yeah, very yeah. long chin and long nose and so on. So I found it really difficult uh, to retouch some of these. Um, as I said before, Bob Hawke took about four minutes. Um, Paul, Paul Keating actually took around about eight attempts over about a six week, six week period. Well, we're very, very impressed with all, all of the work that you've been doing, and I suppose uh, what's on everyone's lips really is, um, what are you working on next? Uh, I'm working on a series called Civilised. Uh, it's to do with the four countries that come to Australia um, through, the, through the early 1600s right through to the late 1700s, which was um, uh, the Dutch, French, Spanish and English, um, and how they saw the Aboriginal people. Great. Well, we look forward to seeing that body of work. Michael, thank you very much indeed, and um, best of luck with your future career. Thanks for having me.